Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Deanna and you're watching Orchid D. Today we're going to have a look at my catacetums and we're going to do a little bit of an update on them. For those of you who may have seen it, a couple of months ago I did film a video called Project Catacetum where I basically repotted all these guys to get them ready for the growing season and they've all been repotted at that stage except for two of the ones in the corner there. So the Cloesia in the corner there has not been repotted because it's been in flower and there's one just behind it that was repotted after all of these guys because I purchased it after. Basically this will be my second summer growing with them and I've made my fair share of mistakes. I'm still learning but there's a couple of different things this summer that are happening so I have got these potted up in various mixes. Um, if you're interested please watch the other video because I go through that in a little bit more detail but basically I'm trying out the PET method for a few of them at the back there and the rest are in more convenient conventional mixes with um, different media but all of them being quite sphagnum heavy and very water retentive. So about half of these I had last year and probably half of them are new. So I got a recent haul from MNS Orchid in June I believe and I did film that unboxing so I will link that down in the description as well. But the other main difference is that I am going to change the grow space because last year I had so many issues with spider mites. I'm going to see how they go growing inside. So I've set all my catacetums up here at the moment. They're not going to stay there because these catacetums are going to just leaf out more and more and get bigger and bigger. Um, and this is just the beginning. But I have started watering some of them. So I'll show you which ones I've started watering and which ones I'm waiting on and why. But I'll just show you the temperature monitor at the moment. You can see it's 29 degrees up here. Humidity is about 52%. Uh, it gets quite warm up here. So I actually I actually think the catacetums are going to love that. It's just a matter of obviously keeping up with the watering and I'm really really hoping that the PET method helps with that. Basically it's almost a little bit like semi-hydro. It involves a reservoir of water and a bit of a layering method with the media. So I'm currently doing lots of reshuffling. This whole indoor grow space is changing because I've started moving stuff onto my balcony grow area. So a lot of the catacetums are actually going to be grown in here. Um, some against that window and some probably here on this shelf where they are currently but you can see at the moment that there's direct sun coming in through that window onto that shelf there and a lot of my hotter growers some of my dendrobiums stay here through summer it gets quite warm here so hopefully they enjoy that but hopefully being inside they're protected from spider mite issues as well but we shall see but while I'm up here I'll just show you something really cute but I've got my washing to fold up here and Look at Frankie, he's all passed out. We went for a big walk this morning. So we'll start going through these one by one. Some of them are doing absolutely amazing. Some of them have run into issues already. So we'll talk about that as well. Um, but if I do have pictures of how, they, how they've progressed in the last two months, I'll put a picture up in the corner or something. But like I said, um, I do have the other video that I filmed. So if you're into catacetums and you are interested in how these guys are growing, then please check out that video. I'll put a link in the description below. I know catacetums aren't for everybody, but I love them. I find them super rewarding and I just find it fascinating how they grow and how amazingly quickly they can develop. So let's start here with my Cloesia Grace done. It has not been repotted, it's in its original media and I didn't repot it because I thought it was spiking and it was spiking. It had three flower spikes but it only developed this one and now the flowers are fading. However, it is featured in my Orchids in Bloom video which was posted the other day. It was actually filmed two weeks ago though so unfortunately with everything going on at the moment I missed filming or even getting a picture of these flowers when they were in full bloom. So the Orchids in Bloom video had these flowers when they were just opening and now they're just fading. So yeah, that's a really big miss on my part. You can see this is another spot where it tried to bring out a flower spike and failed. This is interesting. So here was another failed flower spike. However, it's bringing out what I think is a new growth now. It really does need to go into a new home very soon so that is on my to-do list it's obviously looking quite shriveled could be worse i suppose because i haven't watered it since may or something like that and i actually wouldn't be surprised if it does try and chuck out another growth from this because i think that that's actually two directions of growth there so we'll keep an eye on this cloesia and i'll have it repotted in the next couple of weeks 
All right, so let's start with some of the species catacetums because I do find them very interesting. Now, they've been a little late to the party. They started their growths a little bit later than some of these very complex hybrid catacetums. They have all actually started growing and the cool thing about most of them is that they actually spike from immature growths. So this one is Catacetum tenebrosum and it is my newest edition. I got it back in August there and we potted it then. And you can see that it is is starting to develop a spike there which is pretty cool because it was living down there on that bottom shelf getting some artificial lights and yeah I totally missed it I had no idea that it was doing this so it hasn't been watered yet you can see some roots developing down there but they haven't quite reached the edge of the pot yet so I won't start watering that one just yet Next up over here we've got Catacetum sinuum and you can see that it's got a growth starting there. Nothing too impressive yet um, and you can see that it is starting to grow some nice roots down there. None of them have actually touched the edge so I haven't started watering it yet at all. It's bone dry. Uh, this one will also flower um, off an immature growth so we shall be looking out for little spikes on some of my species. We've got Catacetum laminatum here also flowers off an immature growth. I can't see any flower spikes developing yet but you can see the roots that are developing and they're still short. Again that like the other one nothing in the edges of the pot yet but you can see that they're growing pretty well. I don't like to disturb them too much because they're actually quite sensitive these catacetum roots. They look all vigorous and healthy but as soon as you start messing with the root tips a little bit they do die back. So leave them be um, but I think they're doing quite well so you can also see that these two I'm trialing in that PET method so these are pots that I just found at Bunnings um, they don't have any holes down the bottom but they do have a cone in the middle and you can see that I have put some holes of my own there to create a water reservoir down here uh, but neither of these have been watered yet so they've both got lecca down the bottom this one does have a couple of rocks down for stability some large bark in that middle layer and some sphagnum as the top layer which is fairly tightly packed um, there's also some slow release fertilizer in all of these catacetum mixes at the moment next we'll move over here to my other species which is the Cycnoches heron husanum and it's a little weirder it, this is also being trialed in the um, PET method let's have a look at it it's a little bit of a strange one the way it grows and you can see it actually grew a really nice growth for me last year I tried to grow a flower spike which got burnt and then yeah it got a bit stressed and started chucking out a keiki which I took off this is where the keiki was it was up here somewhere and now you can see that it's been growing another keiki and also down here it's got one two little growths happening um, but neither of them are really growing any roots or anything at the moment and you guys might think I'm a little bit I don't know severe but I will be taking that little keiki off I I don't want it to grow I I really would like it to focus on basal growths. I can do nothing with a keiki up here. I won't be watering it up there. It'll just drain more energy. What I do feel is that I think some of the ones that I'm going to show you next are also a little bit stressed and they've started chucking out probably more growths than they can handle. Um, but yeah, this is a learning curve for me as well. So I'm just going to go with my gut and I'm going to take off this little keiki and hopefully it just focuses on these two. Um, it's very, very doubtful that this is a flower spike. I know that this flowered or tried to flower at the end of its growing season so yeah and plus it just looks more like a growth all right guys so the next four I'm going to show you are mm, struggling in their own little ways and we'll talk through them a little bit mm, the one that's probably doing the absolute worst is Cycnodes wine delight and we knew might not make it you can see it has killed over it looks absolutely terrible however this week I noticed a tiny little growth there so if we can get it from this point of near death to creating a root system and fending for itself it might just make it and check out the last video it was not doing well then either it was a little bit limp and floppy that's because um, when I went away for my honeymoon earlier this year I just stopped watering it I came back and there were mealybugs all through the root ball so it definitely did a number on this little one but the growth is a good sign come on hang in there little one the next one I want to show you is Pierre Correct Cross with Milana Davidson and it is actually a young plant still seedling not 
not flowered. This one was also just down on this bottom shelf here. I had a few there that were just in dormancy. This one had mealybugs on it as well. So yeah, I had to treat it. It's been treated with a mitocloprid, which is like an insecticide. Um, and hopefully that did the trick, but you can see it went through a little bit of stress. So it's put out growths there and um, it tried to push a few out on this side as well. There were originally two little growths on this side as well that were starting up, which haven't quite progressed any further and I don't particularly want it to you can see it is it's not a big plant hopefully it just focuses on those two growths and that will be that so down on the bottom shelf these two were living next to each other and I did find some mealybugs on this as well about a month ago I just had a little look between the leaves I don't know I had a little bit of a worry and I found some mealybugs I killed them off but a couple of weeks later I did see some eggs and some new mealybugs making their way in and you might be able to see some of the damage and some of the those old eggs that are actually dead now but this is on pretty much a weekly treating regime and in the last two weeks it's actually just taken off so I, I really think whatever I'm doing is working hopefully fingers crossed but I will continue to treat it for a little bit longer it's just in those last two weeks that it's probably grown like maybe two leaves at least um, and you can see that the root system has finally finally started to take off too so fingers crossed with this one it too is doing some weird stuff Stuff. I don't know what that is I don't know if that's second growth or what I guess we'll just have to wait and see what it does and the last one I'm not 100% happy with is this Cygnotus Jumbo Kanan. Another one that I've had since last year. It looks like it's doing okay. You can see the little root nubbins coming out. But when I filmed this two months ago, I do believe this was already growing a little growth and it just really hasn't progressed very much. And the initial roots it was trying to push out, you can see, didn't really progress. They just sort of stopped in their tracks, but it does have a few new roots developing. So hopefully it starts to take off soon. All right, guys, so I left with these six and they are all doing fabulously and I can't even take the credit for most of them because they all come from MNS orchids except this one and so they were already doing really really well and hopefully I don't stuff things up so let's have a look but just to tell you guys it is now 34 degrees up here and it's hot next time i'm gonna film in the morning okay let's keep going for now so these two over here i have not touched with a drop of water yet this is signature's jumbo puff it's just started to bring out a new growth actually um, in the last few weeks this one came to me still leafed out so it was still not quite in dormancy but um, i did still repot it and it pretty much shed its leaves straight away after i repotted it but you can see that that growth is still big and fat so it's got lots of reserve to put into growing its new growth all by itself. You can see some plump little roots coming out there. So yeah, it's well on its way, but it will still be quite a few weeks, maybe even a couple of months before I even begin to water that one yet. And this is FDK Desert Tenor. I got this last year, so I can take a little bit of credit for it. It's doing pretty well, growing a new growth there. And yeah, its roots are starting to take off now. So you can see a couple poking down through the media. Maybe in a couple of weeks, I will start to drizzle a bit of water through. And then probably by a month from now, it will be getting full, full watering. Now these two over here, I've only just started watering. So this is is FDK After Dark Black Pearl. Let's have a look at these roots. And I did notice that some are poking through down the bottom of the pot. So there's quite a few I'm sure that I can't see. And <laughs> you can see I've made quite a poor effort to try and redirect some of those roots back into the medium. Uh, not a complete success. This one here is pretty much at the same stage. This is um, FDK After Dark SVO. And um, again, these guys have just kind of been sitting in my study. I just sort of left them there and had them separated from all my other orchids so I wouldn't water them too early. It was every couple of weeks that I was checking the root systems, but you can see that there's some good root progression going down there into that pot. And so um, I trickled a little bit of water in there last week and the week before as well. Pretty sure both of these will progress to full waterings very soon. 
Now let's check out these two. They're both obviously in the PET systems as well uh, and they are very very similar in their setup. They've both got liquor down the bottom. Just their middle media is different and I really don't think it's going to make a big difference but this is in large Orchiata bark and this is actually in a medium mix of bark, perlite and charcoal. So let's have a look at these. These have both begun um, full waterings and it's a bit hard actually with the PT method because you end up filling the reservoir when you water it but these have been uh, fully fully watered so um, I have drenched all the sphagnum and everything last week it's probably been about four or five days since I watered it this one is FDK after dark at Baker's Cheetah and this one is FDK Sunset Ridge Baker's Wine Sunset Sorry, just trying to get some better lighting for you guys but you can see that the roots are green and they're amazingly they're branching out since I've started watering them so there are a couple of nubbins down here but all these little root nubbins are new from when I started watering there's lots of roots in the sphagnum there <laughs> I just love love watching how like these roots just grow and get into that medium Let's have a look at this one. You can see a little root popping in through there. And there's another root there. So yeah, I mean, I just find that really fascinating. Do you see those root nubbins? They were not present on those roots like four or five days ago before I fully watered this plant. I'm sure that is a good thing. Uh, and I'm sure that means the plant is happy. I just find it fascinating on these catacetums how quickly they can just like explode in terms of their root growth. So yeah, I'm fully confident that these guys will do well already i think they're going to be super super thirsty plants that reservoir is going to help me out these two aren't in the pet method they will start becoming really really thirsty and at their peak they'll start needing watering as much as the vanders like every second day every third day they'll need like full watering so yeah that's the catacetum update guys and let's check out if frankie has moved at all nope he has not he's actually though hiding behind the laundry baskets now but he is so pooped um, i hope you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more orchid videos i hope you guys have a great week and happy growing until i see you next time